So I, uh, I get a call the other day from one of my friends who's new in her technical career, and she, uh, she has this project, and she says, I need a website, which boggled my mind. Who says that now? Website? You mean like a web portal or some kind of content management system to like do some glitzy display of your content. Um, the idea of a website just sounds so static and so circa 2000. So when she said this, the first thing that went through my mind is WordPress. WordPress is the answer. You have your options on theme. You don't have to really mess around with the code too much and you can stick to focusing on your content, right? That's what a website is in 2020, content, not code. So that sent me back to my old archives really quickly to figure out, wait a minute, how do you do this in 2020 now? I deployed a WordPress website um, site several times in the past using you know, regular server infrastructure initially, and then later a Docker Compose script. But how do you do this in 2020? So uh, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to deploy a WordPress website now. Okay, the first thing to do is some research. And since we're doing all this prototyping on my Mac, I wanted to just back up and um, say a couple of things about that. We're going to be using Docker as our um, virtualization. And by and large, Docker doesn't run on all distributions of Windows. So um, it, the fastest way to get this prototype was for me to actually grab my Mac. I have plenty of Windows machines, but I grabbed my Mac to do all this prototyping because I can install Docker Desktop, which is what's running here. I have Docker already installed in some previous videos. I use Docker. And this is, um, I neglected to show how I got Docker. <laughs> so here, I have Docker Desktop. It's installed on my machine. It's a prerequisite before we can even move forward. Okay, so once you have Docker installed, the very next thing is, well, WordPress containers. So that's what I did. I searched for WordPress containers, and it directed me over to Docker Hub and the official WordPress release is located. And after going through all of this and reading, 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 lo and behold, there, it is not a Docker container that I'm looking to deploy. I'm looking to deploy a stack. There's two. We want the MySQL and we want, here we go, we want the WordPress piece, which is going to be the web front end. And we want a container for the database, which is MySQL. So they give you the information here um, on how to deploy this using Docker Stack or Docker Compose. I've formerly done this with Docker Compose. Docker Compose just adds another step because now you have to install Docker Compose, whereas Docker Stack works with just plain the Docker uh, installation. So there's nothing additional to do here. So we're going to uh, veer straight to the stack deployment and stay away from Docker Compose because I don't have Docker Compose installed and I don't want to install it. So we're going to use what they have provided for us and we're going to see if we can get this running really quickly. Okay, so just a little bit of a predecessor statement here. I am a developer. I like scripts. So in my mind, I prefer to script everything, including this Docker deployment. Of course, all of this can be done from the command line. They give you the information on how to do it, but um, I'm going to do a little something a bit more crafty here with my script. So I have this script called WordPress Docker Mac. There's some things here, again, that ties it to a Mac. It won't necessarily fail on a Linux system, but um, this was prototyped and tested on a Mac. Not, not everything's 100% with all the 
the different changes in the platforms. So this stack.yaml that they point out here, oops, excuse me, that was Chrome. We want Firefox. So this stack.yaml that we have here, essentially I copied it. Excuse me, copied this and pasted it here. And my program will just make stack.yaml. It's not sitting as a file in the directory. It's taking these, these inputs and just creating it on the fly. So, all right, here's my statement about functions again, if I can stop my cursor from malfunctioning. Blame the cursor, not me, right? So, um, So with functions, you can module, make, make module changes to your script or additions. So features, features, features. One of the features would be to stop WordPress if it's already running. Um, another feature would be to remove the volume. So the stack deployment creates Docker services for WordPress and for the database and um, also creates volumes. So what we want to do, if we're going to run the script again and again, is have a way to remove what's running and reestablish it. So that's what these two functions are about. So we're looking at things a little bit um, out of sync because at this point we have nothing. So, um, or presumptively we have nothing. So stopping WordPress and removing volumes, these two functions, even though they, we're going to call them, but if they're running this for the first time, they will not do anything because you don't have anything. The real one that creates um, the actual WordPress stack is create WordPress function. It's very simple. So there's a lot of echoing, so it looks impressive. You know, this um, Visual Studio code I'm using to do all my development in, this is just a purple theme, so it looks dramatic. But honestly, this is a very simple straightforward script. What it's saying is before you can do a Docker stack deployment you have to do a Docker init, swarm init. It's just a predecessor step. If you didn't know this and you just ran this, it'll tell you that, hey, I got an error. And when you Google that error, that error will tell you, hey, Docker swarm init. So I've never used this before. When I ran this, I got the error. When I Googled the error, it said do that, and then it all worked. So there you go, simplified. So after we uh, create the stack, then we're going to list the services. We're going to wait 10 seconds, and then we're going to list the volumes. For some reason, there's some delay in listing volumes. All the volumes don't pop up right away, so you have to give it a moment. Everything else, when it says it's, it's echoing a line, there's a value at the top that says, I'm a line. So it's just going to print a line on the screen. It's just printing a line on the screen. Echoing, initializing, swarm, that's just so we know what we're doing. Each one of these. Now, these are optional things to put in scripts. I'm writing this because I'm making this as uh, something that I'm, I'm handing over to someone else. So I want to annotate it. I want to make sure everything is listed here in a way that someone else can follow it without having to ping me a hundred thousand times for what does this mean and what does that mean so this is why uh, we're setting it up this way so if we keep going so docker lists sorry I just want to make sure I can see the services listed for the new uh, two containers and here's the volume I want to see the two new volumes volumes stay persistent so when we actually set up our WordPress um, website, the volumes will remain even though we may destroy the rest of the server, um, depending on which functions uh, we enable. So the volumes will keep the data persistent. Okay, and here's just more just screen printing and waiting. So that's, that's, there's the big deal, creating WordPress. So Let's do that. Now, I will say mine is already running. That's what this is. This is WordPress. This is my WordPress. I already ran this. I already know that it works. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is my script because these are functions and each function can can actually work independent of the others if it's written properly. Sometimes there's collusion among functions, but we're not talking about that today. We're talking about straightforward functions that have all of their uh, functionality encapsulated. So here we go. We're going to stop WordPress. Oops. Running. And we're going to remove the persistent volumes. Now this time I want to do this. Next time I may not want to do this. So this is made to be, these first two are made to be turned off. Um, the one you persistently want to keep on would be this. But again, we're just doing a prototype setup. This is running on my local machine. Ultimately, once we get through the whole prototyping and like what we've created, we're going to deploy this to a Linux machine somewhere. So um, this is just our initial setup. And so dumping everything is going to be fine for right now. So I want to dump everything I previously created. And I'm going to run this. So the rest of this I'm going to get to in a second, but let's just do this. So <clears throat> here I'm in the same directory where everything is. Here's my files. This is the one I just edited. And we're going to run it. Oops. Oops. It helps to save. So this um, dot here means I did not save it. So let me save it. Okay. It's ensuring that the Docker daemon is running. That's why it prompt me prompted me for my password. Um, and that is the piece that ties it to a Mac. Uh, if this were a Linux machine, it would be uh, quite different. So the WordPress containers are already living locally, so we don't have to view that. It's, it's, um, they were already downloaded from Docker Hub, and so all we're watching is um, the containers actually being removed and being regenerated. So they have just been recreated. And here we go. Here's some volumes. Here's our volume. So when we go back to our actual script, let's see. It's listing the volumes. It's right here. So it's right here and it's waiting, which must mean that it's waiting for our website to come up. So this is the cached version. This is the one from before. So this is what we've just deployed. Boom. There's nothing. It's a blank website. And so right here you'll see there's nothing. <clears throat> so yay. We've deployed a Word WordPress using Docker Stack. But let's keep this going. Let's set this up really quick. And you know, the best thing about WordPress is, is that you can programmatically manipulate it. What does that mean? That means you don't have to use HTML. That means you don't have to use the WordPress admin. That means you can use the command line and create and, and move content directly to your WordPress website and have it look fabulous. So let's just set this up really quick. And should take us seconds here. I'm going to use some values that I've used before. Glory Khan, Glory Khan. That's the name of my site. Somebody's going to say that that is racially insensitive, and I'm going to say no, it isn't. Okay, and give no justification for that. All right. So there we go. I'm using a uh, regular password. A password it doesn't matter. You can use a strong one. You can use a weak one. We're just prototyping locally. Okay, so I'm going to go here to the second tab, and when I refresh, we can see that I'm already logged in somewhere. 
and the other one and what I want to do is go to the web front end and this is what it looks like so I'm gonna make a couple of changes really quick to facilitate what we're gonna do next and that would be let's go into settings just another WordPress site no it's not this is a blog about nothing important okay so let's fix the time my time zone would be a minus four I'm gonna save this I'm doing this by hand and I'm encouraging anyone who's listening to do uh, to this right now to do this by hand so that you can become familiar with the values because this can also be done programmatically um, but we're not doing that today um, so we just did that let's go to reading this is the big one it needs to be set to your latest post for this particular example it looks best it will sometimes default to this with a couple of things selected if it does just change it to this save okay we're almost through this let's go to the plugin that needs updating because it says it needs it so we're going to just update it and one other thing we're going to change is the appearance so there's these two themes that need to be updated so let's just do that Even though we updated them, we're not using them. We're going to use this one. And we're just going to activate it. <clears throat> so if I go here, this is the previous one. Now here's our current. Lori Khan, a blog about nothing important. Standard WordPress. Really clean. Gorgeous. Hello, world. All right. Cool. back to being a programmer. I was in the GUI too long and I, I feel like I've been tainted. So back to the command line, right where I belong. Okay, but, so, with a little uh, more discussion. Browser's not really a GUI thing. Okay, so WordPress has a command line interface so that you can control your blog posts and pages and manipulate WordPress. And um, it is my preferred way to interact with WordPress. So I want to show you how we get that installed really quickly and run it. So here's the WordPress command line.org page. It tells you how to download the WordPress command line. You curl this, get its info, change the permissions on it, move it to a particular folder. I'm sorry, a particular folder change its name and you can run it so we're going to install this on the WordPress container that's running so let me see docker container list thank god back to the command line you see we have two containers running make this a little smaller and this is the one for the database, and this is the one for the um, web front end. So this is the one we're going to install the command line on. So, and this is the one that's running our website. So this is this is where we are. So this container is what we're viewing. So let's let's go and see how this is done. So we're done with this. We've already created everything. Shutting this off. This WP command line programmatically control control WordPress blog post. Hmm. Then this is what we want. So we want to install this. So here we go. Here's those instructions from WordPress.org. Download the file. I'm deleting it if it exists. I'm downloading it again. I don't like using curl. I'm W get girl doesn't matter they do the same thing the permissions are changed now here is where we get slightly fancy what is this I'm getting the WordPress container name this complicated thing it's kind of, it changes for everybody so we want to programmatically grab this name and we're gonna uh, 
list it all out, so, uh, format everything by name, and we're going to look for the one that has WordPress underscore WordPress, WordPress underscore WordPress. The database will be WordPress underscore database. We don't want this one. We want this one. And this will return our full container, which goes all the way back, back to here, by the way, this nasty long name. It will return our, our container name. So that's what we want. So that's that. That works for everyone. I mean, I, I give the ex explanation, but it just works. And here is where we're going to copy our WordPress command line. This that got downloaded here. We're going to copy it to that container. This is the home directory. So when you when you uh, into the container, this is the default path where you land. So I'm just sending it to its default path. And let me see if I can show you that really quick. I'm copying the name longhand. So Docker, exec, interactive terminal, container name, this long thing. I'm going to type in bash this time because I want it to go to the container. You see where we defaulted to? var ww html we'll go here you see var ww html so that's where I copied it to I do a list uh, oh I didn't put it there yet <laughs> I was like where is it I right, we have to run this first but this is where it's all going so it's going in that uh, directory okay Let's keep going. And it's going to make a blog post just to let us know that it actually is uh, operational. So that's what this is, a blog post. All right, so let's see. First, we're going to go down here in our script. We are going to comment those out. just run this so I'm inside the container here so let's get out and we're now on my Mac same program different function and we're gonna run it so there it is downloading the far file and it supposedly made a blog post it says testing programmatic updates let's see so Refreshing, scroll down. There it is. Testing programmatic updates. This date time stamp is here. Something I always use is called current date, current date time. So this will programmatically, every time it runs, just get exactly the right date time stamp and prefix the message. Okay, so we're programmatically now able to to manipulate our WordPress. Yay! This is boring. How about more, 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 more? So, all right, all right, all right. Let's make a whole bunch of blog posts, she said. All at once? Ugh, child's play. Okay, so update blog. Now, this one is going to be a little bit different because this is a two part script because I script um, because it makes sense so this update block function um, here we've seen this it gets a container name gets the current date it posts a title it posts a message I mean it gets a title gets a message and then it creates a post it creates a post that has um, a blog message a blog title a blog message and an image. I'm going to show you that. Seconds. Image. GIF URL. So it takes three inputs, but it takes these three inputs from at runtime. So let me go to the top. Blog title, blog message, GIF. These two we're not using. Excuse me for this version. It's just using this one, two, three. So Let's, let me show you. 
So we're going to convert this script again into morph it into something else. We're going to turn off this command line install and we're going to turn on this update blog feature. There's some very slight HTML embedded just to clear up our formatting, but otherwise this is it's just creating a, a blog post with a title. Um, a title and a message and an image. That's it. So we're going to turn this on and I'm going to show you how this program works. So here, I'm going to grab the previous actually outputted what it ran to create that post that we just read. Obviously I've already done this. I've already taken this off the screen, copied it, I did some quick formatting to make it easy to read. That kind of thing. And All right, this one's not right, but this one's right. This is better spacing on this one. Okay. But this is the same thing. So we're going, if you look, our WordPress is different this time from the way it was last time. That's why you have to programmatically get this value. It cannot be static. It always changes between deployments. So let's take that out. So now let's just create a post manually. Docker exec interactive terminal the name this is the name of the container in full full uh, longhand PHP WP CLI this is the same thing as running WP is a shortcut it's just this set, this calls the WordPress command line allow root to post it will give you trouble uh, the root path uh, when you're in a container you are in there as root and root is really not supposed to do all of this but we're doing it and so you can override that uh, initial block and create a security breach but it's okay this is internal we're just prototyping the production one will not be this way I changed the post title told it to publish so let's just copy this so that I just re just pretty much changed the message on what it did the last time enter it says it created post number six. Next. I'm going to refresh. Test, 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 test. Okay. Well, that's how you do it by hand. Anticlimactic. I want to create a bunch of them. And I don't want to create them by hand. And I actually want to do what we said, which was to add these other things. So that one just just created the message and uh, created the title. The way this function works is you call WordPress, you give it the title, you give it the message. This would be title, message, and this is the GIF. And it passes these parameters GIF, it passes it to this function, update blog, in the WordPress doc macker script. So this wrapper script passes values to this one, and that's all it does. And it waits. I'm going to get rid of this 20 seconds and make it 10. But you're gonna, we're going to systematically see all of these blog posts populate the database. One other thing because I'm a clean freak, I put in another function here to just delete everything that's there. Post list, get a list of, of all the posts, docker exec, there we go, wp post delete, remove, so this value, once you get the list, set it as the variable remove, and then delete them all. That's all it's doing. So we're going to delete, and then we're going to create all of these, and we're going to see what this mess is. Okay, and we're going to run this one, Entertainment Examples. That's just what it is. And here we go. 
So I removed 1, 6, and 5. It's creating 7. So let's go over here. Howdy. So it's going to pause 10 seconds between each post. Just to give us a chance to refresh and talk. We don't really need to do it this way. Or you can put a whole bunch of blog posts prearranged um, and set the time to say post every few hours. Like you're really there. So apparently, these blog posts have a sense of humor. And we can see it. We can see it in real time. So in a short order, we've managed to programmatically populate our newly created WordPress website. So this can be extended and, and used in so many different ways. Um, these posts can be made longer. Of course, I, I set this up so that all the colors can be easily identified and adjusted uh, to fit um, whatever format you would like. And that brings us to a conclusion. So, there you go. The new way to deploy WordPress. Thank you. My name is Lori Sebastian. Have a great day.